society. Where the web flourishes, so does society. If I put it more simply, there are no situations, there are no countries, to be very precise, whose situations worsened with the arrival of the internet. And in every case, it's gotten better. And there's still too far many, too, still far too many of these countries, and I gave you lots of examples, we could talk about others, um, where the, the economies are in shambles, they have almost no growth, whose citizens are affected every day by violent conflict, and where autocracy makes the model, remains the model of governance. That's the majority of humans on our globe. But every one of these countries terribly undershoots their potentials. Mobile phones now spreading through them are only the good news after censorship. It's sort of the good news, right? What's new in these societies is connectivity in mobile phones and the shift of empowerment. So mobile phones and their associated data services can solve most of their short-term problems. By the way, let's pick on Somalia, right? The classic failed state since the Cold War. There are no banks, but there's mobile banking. And interestingly, telecommunications is the only profitable and legal industry in the entire country. Right? It's in fact the majority employer in the, in the country. And citizens finally have an opportunity to create and disseminate content so that their education, health, and economic needs can be met in an absence of a functioning government. Just imagine the lives of these people and what a huge change this means. So in these societies, the schools may be broken with few teachers or textbooks, but education and literacy can be achieved with a mobile device or a tablet. Put a, smoke, put a phone in a child's hand and you'll expose them to the informal and more vibrant educational ecosystem. Those who cannot migrate to urban areas, what will become part of what I describe as a virtual urbanization process where they can integrate into the marketplace of ideas without changing their, their physical location. In these countries, and because of this, corruption will no longer go unnoticed, and citizens will use their mobile phones to raise the cost of being corrupt. Violence, especially against women, will be checked by cameras on mobile phones. Even a totalitarian government cares about its image and its pride. The image of citizens in China with their phones taking picture of these terrible environmental disasters done by the local government changes their monolithic world. world. It really does work. So governments, of course, they're not stupid. They're resisting this final step. Turning on the data service of their phones, right? Many of these countries have SMS-enabled phones, but they didn't turn on the data service. And enabling smartphones is an easy path. So they can either stay behind, right, with all the problems, or they can make this step to turning on the data services. And it's, a, this, it's a path to real growth and better governance, but also empowering their citizens, which is why it's so interesting. Now, I'm not suggesting that transparency and communication is the complete solution. Just because we document things does not mean that they're fixed. Public documentation can even invite retribution because, of course, the web remembers everything. And, and sort of the network has perfect memory in that sense. So you need another step. You need an enforcement step. So when you combine the benefits of mobile phones and cloud computing, and again, for you all, this is all old hat. You've had this for years. Remember, most people in the world have no concept of even what we're talking about. You could deliver government services, obviously, directly. It's an antidote to corruption. You replace the need for textbooks. You can run on solar power for places that don't have any no, uh, no electricity. Mobile payments and merchant payment systems help track tax evasion and scale local commerce. So it's, a, it's sort of a one-stop solution for a lot of things. So these are the new truths that will define our future world. And those leaders that don't accept these truisms will inevitably find themselves left behind or unpleasantly surprised and out of power, often because they failed to understand any of the things that we're talking about, and they were surprised, and thank goodness they were.